Hey everybody, this is Mike with Vant Trading. Uh, I'm going to be doing a class today on think or swim hacks. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions uh, over the last couple weeks as we've done our beginner's day trading course. A lot of questions on Mike, how do you get certain things on your charts? How do you get the toolbar on your charts? How do you set up your charts? So I thought it might be uh, good to do a quick little class on how to set some of this stuff up. Okay, first off, when you're going into think or swim, uh, there's two ways to do a chart. Okay, do you have what's and you know you have the main tabs up here. You got monitor, trade, analyze, scan, market watch, and charts. So you want to click on charts, and then you got two options. You got what's called the the charts option. Okay, which is right here, or you got the flexible grids option. And really for me, the charts uh, option, it's easy way for me to share layouts with other people or to receive shared layouts. It just seems to work out better that way using that option. Um, you can also load symbols uh, and save different types of grids. So I'll give you an example here. So really the way to, to work the chart section is you have this box right up here in the right hand corner up here. Uh, if you click on that box, uh, really you, you can hover over the squares and however many squares you hover over is how many charts it's gonna, it's gonna uh, set up within that grid. So if I click on the six here, it'll set these charts up as uh, the six charts. Now I can even go and, and set all the charts up and, and click on that or I can go back and just do one chart okay really uh, depends on what you're looking for and then it also you know so let's say you set it up and you want to do two charts back to back like this well then what you do is you just go detach okay and it popped off on another screen and you know here you got two charts now that you can start working with and uh, organizing the way you want to organize um, but you can also, and once you have chart, I like to do it within, if you're going to set charts up, set it up within this main tab screen, because uh, you can then save the layout if you want to do that. And I'll kind of show you here, if you click on this three-lined uh, uh, layout here, you can kind of see, um, you know, as far as what you're doing with these different types of charts, okay? So you can actually load symbols from um, a, you know, a watch list that you may have and I'll load it into the charts that you have set up into the grid. So it's a good way of doing that. Now, if you click over here and you look down below, you can see all the different um, uh, layouts that I have saved. So, you know, I'll kind of go through it real quick. If I click on this layout, little box pops up and I just click OK. And this is my tick cumulative uh, chart that, you know, I have imported in that was shared with me. I had a coder code this for me. And uh, uh, this is how it's been able to be popped up just like that. So I saved it. So if I go back over, you know, I can go and I also have my Arval. Okay, and again, I click OK, and you can kind of see this sets up a, a grid of six different um, stock charts uh, that uses RVOL and a couple other different indicators that I've had coded in there. And again, if I want to detach, I just come up here, click on the uh, three lines and click detach. Um, and it, it detaches uh, perfectly like that. And I can move it to whatever screen, you know, I can readjust the size, however I wanna look and readjust that. So it's a nice, easy way if you're saving some stuff. And again, if you come back, you know, I can come back and, you know, let's say I wanna look at, um, you know, I have this all-inclusive, uh, it's got, you know, basically different charts. I got it set up so I can use these arrows. So here I have my five minute R vault chart. And then here I got, you know, a nice little hourly chart. And then if you go on, you know, actually that was a day chart and here's a day chart as well. So you can kind of, you know, set it up that way. Uh, you can also come back and you can hit clear symbols or you can go back and hit reset and it'll reset this up for you. Uh, and it works pretty easy. So it's, you know, and if you want to, you know, let's say you come in here and, you know, you, you're constantly using four charts and you come in and, you know, you can set your charts up however you want to set those charts up. Uh, and let's say you come up with a, with a system that um, works really well for you and you load it in the symbols that you wanted to load into. What you can do is click on here. Um, if you want to save it, just click save grid as. 
um, a little box will pop up and you can rename whatever, you know, let's just go XXX here, uh, click save and it'll save this layout, however you set it up. And remember, you can add studies, you can add, you can link this to, uh, if you click this little link button, you can link the, the cells together or you can link them to a watch list if you want, right? So, and you can put different studies on and stuff like that. And if you come back over here, you'll see this XXX was saved. Now, if you want to get rid of it and you want to delete one, just go down to delete delete, click XXX, and a little box pops up, say OK, and it's now, you know, been deleted from your list. Now, what I like to use more than the charts tab is the flexible grid tab. OK, because it gives me a little bit more of uh, to be a little bit more flexible when I'm setting my charts up. OK, um, so, you know, what you do is if you're looking at you don't have those three little boxes up there, but what you do is you have something called customized grid. So you can check mark this off or you can check mark it on. If you check mark it on, this little box appears down here. So what you do is you have a little up up plus a little side plus and then a, a box with a line through it. So uh, if you click the up button, then it adds a chart to the to the top of uh, your current chart. If you add a side button, it's going to add it to the side. So now, as you can see, you know, if you want to chart, you really can't have this type of setup, right? It doesn't allow you to do two and then just one at the bottom. It's kind of more you know, kind of, um, you know, like a square or rectangle type deal. But with flexible charts, it kind of lets you set things up a little bit differently. And that's why I like using it. Now, if you see, notice here, um, you see this little uh, sidebar that's been clicked. Well, if I throw a stock symbol in there, let's throw Apple in there. Um, this little sidebar comes up, it pops up and you can kind of switch through and add level two and, you know, a couple other things in here. But, you know, I don't use Thinkorswim to try Trade. So I really don't like to use those bars. So I always make sure I click those off um, because it just becomes a pain in the butt. So, you know, again, you know, come out, I'll clear the symbols and clear that out. So you can really, you know, you can do some really unique things as far as setting this up. Um, and it works really well. And then you can save these layouts well as well. And you can see I have a bunch of layouts saved in here. Okay. And the way to save, let's say you want to save this layout here, just hit click save flexible grid. Um, bring the box over to this um, uh, monitor so you can see it. Uh, and, you know, let's say we want to save it as XXX again. I uh, will hit save. And then, you know, you can see it now is uh, it's, it's saved. So you go back up, you can see XXX is saved in there. And then if you don't want to have that in there and you want to delete it, you know, just click, click it out of the list and delete it out there. It's pretty easy, um, pretty easy to do. Um, and it, it's pretty nice. So I, let me show you, I have a bunch of, of charts that I have um, saved, layouts that I've saved in here. And I'm gonna pop these out. You know, I got six different monitors and screens. Um, so if I, and I'm constantly traveling. So I have an office set up in Key West. We got one up in New York. We got one in Maryland. So, you know, I like to kind of make sure I have these, you know, see, cause I'm always closing down think or swim wrong or something different. So that way I constantly have it I could just pop them and reset my, my desk setup really easy. Um, and you can go actually in here and save your setup, but I'll get into that in a different uh, different time. So let's, you know, I got this, this set up here. One, it's called one day. It means one chart. And you can kind of see it pops in, you know, one chart. It's my day chart. Okay, for what I have here. And so what I like to do is when I'm going through and analyzing stocks, I like to look at three different time frames. So what I'll do is uh, to make things easier on me, I will set up uh, I, on one screen the day time frame. I'll set up on another screen um, the hourly time frame, and then another screen I'll set up the one minute. So I have three different charts, and as I and they're all linked together. As I pull up a stock, I can see what the long term view is, the intermediate term, and the short term view is. So you know the way now that you I got this day in here. Now the way I kind of pull this in detail attach this, I just click up here and click detach. So now I'll pull this over so you guys can see it. It's now a loose form chart and I can move this over to another screen I have. And then I'll go back up here and I'll click the hourly. 
uh, one, click OK, and then the hourly chart pops in that I like to use. OK, and you know, a lot of times I got to auto zoom. Uh, you just right click and click auto zoom because a lot of times when some of these charts, uh, it makes you do that. And then I'll click detach and I can throw that on a different screen. And then I'll also go in and let's set up the one minute. OK, and click OK. And now I've got my one minute chart set up uh, the way I want to have it set up. If you notice, I don't have any volume on this one minute chart. And that's OK, because really, I don't want I don't need volume on all three charts. OK, and I'll get into that a little bit. So I've got it set up so that the volume is not on that chart. And we'll go over those appearance stuff in a minute. So and then I can just detach this. Um, I can just go in, I'm oh, sorry about that, go over here to the three lines, detach it, and off I got, and I got my one minute chart detached. Now, if you ever want to duplicate a chart, you don't have to go all the way back into the charts tab. You can basically go up here. I just popped this chart out of the uh, one minute QQQs, and you can go up here and click detach again, and it will duplicate that chart for you. So you, it's an easy way, to, a quick way to really duplicate charts, and I can just keep one detaching and uh, copying more and more charts, and I can add maybe different symbols in that I want to do. So you know, I'll close those down. So now I have my hourly, I have my one minute, and I have my day charts all set up pretty nicely. Now I like to to go over a little bit of a chart appearance because a lot of times people are looking at okay, Mike, how how do you you know how did you set your charts up? You know, a lot of people don't understand some of the shortcuts you can use and stuff like that. I'm going to give you your first shortcut. So you have you have your toolbar up here, and if you want to go to settings, you can easily click on this little gear icon and it pops up. But I like to use a little hotkey uh, for this, and it's Control S and it pops up. So if you hit Control S, it'll pop up for you right here, um, the settings, and you don't have to go through, you know, because sometimes when your charts, and where this works really nicely is if your charts are kind of like compressed, and let's kind of, you know, compress one of these charts in here if I can. Oh, it won't let me do it while the box is open. Okay, so if you kind of compress the chart in here and, you know, uh, get it nice and tight, and sometimes you'll get it where, it, look, see that little icon's gone, right? So you got to kind of go through here and, and that doesn't work. And then, you know, you're going through a bunch of, you got to go to style and then you got to go to another box and the box closes on you, you got to get settings. So a lot of times when you've got smaller charts, it's just just easier if you just go control S and boom, look, it just pops right up. You don't have to go search and hunt and pack for all this. Now, what I like to do is, you know, so that's your first key is your hot key right there, control S to open up your settings on your chart. Um, and then you got all these tabs up here. Okay, and I want to kind of, you know, start with the equities tab, because like I said, if I, I like to trade, we like to look at multiple time frames. Okay, and when you're using multiple time frames, you know, I don't real estate space for my charts for price action is important. OK, now I always talk about volume is important, but so is price action. Right. And so but I don't need the same volume information on three different charts. So what I like to do is I like to set it up so my one minute charts that, you know, it's all the volume is gone. So, again, if we close this out, you know, you look at this chart here, there's no volume to be seen on this chart. Well, I got it on my five minute chart and on my hourly chart, so I don't need the volume again. So what I do is I take, now I got more real estate space. Uh, and the way you do that is again, go into settings, go to equities and see where it says show volume subgraph. So if you click on it and hit apply, well, you got the volume subgraph down there. If you click on it again and click apply, well, now it's gone. Now a little hint for you, you see these little arrows, okay? Well, if you click on that arrow, Okay, and hit apply, and you go back up here to style. Guess what? Now it's here. You don't even have to go into settings. If you just drop down in style, you can click here. It'll pop up this volume subgraph. If you click here, it'll take it off. So you don't even have to go into settings to do that. A little interesting, another tip there. So going back to equities. So um, I like volume subgraph. That's important for me. Um, also, uh, if you look down here, I, I would like to click this because I use this a lot. Show extended hours trading session. Okay, well, you know, if you click on this, then it's going to highlight, you know, right down here, it's going to highlight the extended hours trading session, and it's going to show those trading session. So if you hit click apply, and we come down here, uh, and we auto zoom, 
here, this, this little area here that's kind of, you know, grayed out, this is the extended hours. It's the pre-market and the aftermarket for this stock. So it kind of sets it that way. Now I did click and uh, let it show on my dropdown menu. So what I can do is I can click it off or I can click it on. So again, makes it real easy off or on and you can kind of, you know, get a little bit better understanding and maybe clean up your charts a little bit uh, by, by doing that way uh, and using that arrow. Now, going back to settings, I also like to go on the time axis, right? And, and look at the expansion area. See here, you can actually, and this is the area over by the chart that um, really designates how much space you have. I like to open that up a little bit and you could put whatever number you want in there. So if you put 25 bars and hit apply, you see how the price action moved away from the right of this chart. Right. You know, I may want to maybe a little bit more. Let's go 35 bars and, you know, let's see if that gives us good action. So right here now, it kind of doesn't clutter it up against the side. And you ever get your charts that, you know, you think you're looking at the right price action, but it's really off the chart a little bit. You know, this kind of alleviates that issue as well. Um, by looking at the exp expansion area on the time axis. Now, um, again, you can click if we go back to the time axis, we can click, actually it doesn't give you an opportunity to click on that, so I didn't realize that. Uh, let's now move on to, you know, more into the appearance side. You know, if you look here, uh, if you wonder, I get a lot of simple questions. Mike, how do you get your candles? Just, you know, my candles don't come this way. Well, you can go under appearance and you can, you know, you can fill up your candles. You can fill the down care candles. You can actually change the color in here. If you want to add a grid, you can add a grid to the back part, right? And just hit apply and you got a grid laid over. Or you can, um, you know, take that off and leave a blank, which is what I like to do. Um, so that's all found on the appearance tab. And then finally, what I want to look at um, is the general tab right in here. Okay. And this is where, you know, you can find some, some different stuff in here. And, you know, I get a lot of questions on um, my toolbars. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. If you kind of bring up and sometimes it works really great and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm gonna show you. So if you look here and go on the settings and you go under my tools, okay, I'm gonna click this off. Typically it shows up as off, okay? So there's no toolbar in here. So if we go into settings and you wanna create a toolbar, you just go right here, you click on each chart. Okay, you can see I have a little arrow applied, hit apply and hit okay. So now you can see, you got this little toolbar up here, which is really nice. And this little pin lets you pin it to the top of the chart, which I like to do. Um, <clears throat> this to me, when I found this little hack out, this was really one of the best hacks I ever got with thinkorswim charts for me. There's actually a couple of good ones I'm going over here, but um, this was one of the best ones. So what this does is it lets you put seven, seven different buttons up here. Um, and it could be a style button. It could be a, um, a study button. It could be really almost anything. And what I have is, so now this is a one minute chart, right? So I now have what's called a daily style saved. And if I click on that button, it now takes that stock from a one minute to a daily chart just by clicking a button. I don't have to go through and load a style or do any of this other nonsense. Just by clicking a button, I go to a daily chart. Now I also have a setting called a daily Arval and I click on that and it has my Bollinger Bands in here and it has a bunch of different like MACD and RSI um, that I can look at and it gives me a different view of the stock. Then it has an hourly chart, right? Our hourly Arval chart and lets me look at the hourly so I can see what the intermediate um, view of this stock or a, in this case, ETF for the QQQs, right? Then it has the five minute, five minute Arval, and it kind of gives me all my different tools that I like to use in this five minute chart. And it gives me a one minute uh, chart. And, you know, what's great is you can also add a bunch of different drawing tools. And li I like to use these two uh, trend and price. You know, the way to get the drawings is you just click on your scroll button, right? And you're, it's a really quick access way to get to, you know, if you want to draw, you know, a price level, or if you want to change to a trend line, or if you want, you could just have it up here. So, you know, if I click here, I got now the, the cursor is going to let me draw a price level. 
uh, that I want to do, and it sets it up really nicely. Now, if I want to go right back and do a trend line, I just click on the trend line, and it lets me draw a trend line. So it's a really good way, a quick access way to set up uh, some tools and to set up some different styles so you can quickly look at a stock uh, and go back and forth. Now, if you look at these buttons here, this button, if this button's clicked, any changes you make here is going to apply to just this chart that you're on. Now, if you click here and, you know, again, we went back and you have a grid of four different um, windows open, then it's going to apply to all four of those windows in that one grid window. Okay. Now, if you click the all button, it will change it on every single chart that you have in on open with thinkorswim. Now, the way you kind of customize this, because when you open it up, it's going to have its own typical, you know, your different, you know, the thinkorswim um, um, standard uh, buttons. I forget what they were. You just click this little gear shift and that's really your edit button. So now, you know, first off, if you don't have seven buttons, that's the max tool that you have, then and this will be highlighted and it'll let you click add a button. But let's say we go in here and, you know, um, what I really like about this, first off, it lets you rename a button. So when I first added this, this was called price level. But I renamed this because when I had my smaller charts come, you know, it really was just a lot, all these toolbars weren't showing. So because the names were a little too long. So I wanted, I was able to come in, rename them so I could actually have, you know, even when the charts were compressed, I could still have access to all these buttons and you'll, you'll get a little good feel. So let's you rename it. So I can even go in and I could just take price completely off because it really, do I really need to have that? Well, actually, if I took it all the way off, it put back the original one. So let's see if we can do this again. Um, and it's not letting me uh, do that. It did before. So let's say, so what I did, I brought down the price, but let's just take it down to P, okay? Because we know it's price, hit rename, and now there it goes down to P. And so if I want to make this even you know, shorter, I know this is trend. So I just come in and I put T and you know now that's a smaller button. So it's a nice thing. And if you come in here, if you want to, you know, delete a button, you just hit a delete, you delete the button right away. Um, it lets you move the buttons. You know, if you just click and drag, you can move the buttons to wherever you want those buttons to go. Um, if you click add button here, you can add a drawing tool. So any of these drawing tools you can add, if you want to add a Fibonacci in there, you know, retracement uh, level, you can add the Fibonacci retracement level. If you want to add, you know, rectangle and arrow, um, you know, text, anything, you can put, add all that up. You can also add studies. Okay, so you can add studies, you can, you know, add VWAP if you want to add a VWAP up there and stuff, or you can add a study set. So, you know, I have a bunch of different study sets saved in here. And if I wanted to, I could add the study sets up there, but I think there's a better way um, than adding and using up one of these buttons because these buttons are really important to me um, as far as saving time. Or you can, add, which really my favorite is adding a style. And I'm going to show you next how to save a style um on you know on your charts and so you know i have different styles and that's where i have my daily style my daily r of all you can see they're different charts with different studies on them and you can see i have my my one minute trade and i have my five minute r of all on here as well and some other ones that i may want to put up there so it's really convenient you know you can really add some stuff on here it works really nice so i did you know uh, delete the price. So let me go back and put back my price level. Okay. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to rename it and I'm just going to rename it P and click rename. And it's, I click done. And now I have my seven buttons and they're on all my charts. And again, if you click the pin button it holds it, but if you don't click, if you unclick the pin button, you know, it'll disappear and I'll bring up another chart you can kind of see here QQQs, it disappears and pops down. Q, you know, it, it'll it'll pop up and down based upon um, uh, you know where your cursor is. So it's a nice little tool when you're doing that. So uh, you know, it, it's the toolbar is one of the biggest things for me. Uh, going forward and, uh, you know, setting that up. Now, I talked about a couple hotkeys 
uh, you know, that I was talking about on the charts. And I, you know, there's some other hotkeys that you got. The way you get to your hotkeys on Thinkorswim for your charts is, you know, go to the setup button. So we're in the main, uh, everything for Thinkorswim pretty much is works really well out of the main tab. This is the main tab that has all your count information on it. And it has all these home tabs up here. So if you go to the setup button on the main tab, on the main screen, um, and then click application settings. This is where you find all of your hotkeys. Okay. And you go up to the top, you got general notifications, order de defaults, hotkeys. And here's where all your hotkeys, if you want to change some hotkeys, you can change them. And for me, if you come down, you can see under the chart, uh, under the chart section, you know, and you want to make sure this is clicked that they're enabled um, and it'll give you the hotkeys. And again, uh, you know, works really well. Uh, and you can zoom in and out of charts by pressing control plus or control mi you know, minus, uh, and you know, it's something to look at. So make sure you set up your hotkeys. It'll make things easier. So going back to charts, you know, we talked about you know, saving styles and adding different types of studies. So you know, if I come back here and we go to style, Okay, um, I'm gonna, well, actually, let me open up settings and I wanna show you something in the settings section. The one thing that I like to, to click these little arrows and click and save is show studies, okay? So I click apply here, okay, because if you come in this drop down menu and you have show studies, so you can click this and your studies are gone and you just see nothing but price action, you know, or you click it back and your studies are back. Sometimes your charts can get pretty crowded and sometimes it's good to just, you know, click, your studies off and just look at price action and see, you know, what is just pure price action doing because price is what's the most important thing. It's price that pays. So if we go back up in the style and I'll put the studies back on, you can click it right here. But what I want to do now is um, I want to close this chart. Okay. And, you know, I want to show you, let's go back to flexible grid. I want to show you. So the way I trade is we look at multiple time frames. Okay, so I have a, a obviously a layout saved under flexible grid for multiple time frames, and so I'm going to detach this here. And if you look at it, um, let me pop this chart over here. So what I have on a bunch, I have four different stocks that I typically manage, and I'm always looking at the one minute chart and the five minute chart for a particular stock. So let's say that we're looking at, uh, oh, what's a good stock to look at today? Let's say we're looking at Peloton. Okay, so if you look at the one minute chart on Peloton, okay, and I'm a big proponent of you know multiple time frames. So you can look in here and see how whippy, and you see these wicks on this one minute time frame action on Peloton, kind of whippy action in there and stuff like that. So you got to be careful with that, you know, if you're looking and not getting whipped out. But if you come in on the five minute chart, looks a little bit different, right? So you got, you know, the five minute bars look a little bit different. You know, you don't have all this whippy action action. So, um, you know, it's nice to come in and, and see the five minute bars and maybe, you know, kind of trade based off that. Okay. So uh, that's, you know, that's some action there, you know, on actually Peloton is not So I like to use, if you look at these charts here that I have, I like to use a one minute and a five minute because, you know, let's zoom in on Peloton here. Look at this one minute chart. See how whippy this action is in here. Um, it's pretty whippy and you kind of got, you know, uh, some wicks and sometimes you can kind of get whipped you know, wicked out uh, by following that. But if you look at the five minute bars, if we kind of zoom in on the five minute bars, five minute bars a little bit different. Um, and now, you know, it's kind of hard to see maybe on my chart because I got this coded in from an overbought and from, and you know, I can get into some of that stuff a little bit later. But you can kind of see the five minute bars, you know, not as whippy. You can see it holding view up a lot better. Um, and, you know, nice price action going up on Peloton from a five minute compared to a one minute standpoint. 
point. So that's why I like to have two different charts. So when I'm looking at my charts, you have my, you have a one minute, five minute, and I have that saved in there. Um, and if you look here, I have it saved under flexible grid as a two trade. And so I can pop up as many of these as I want and I can set my four. And I, like I said, I have four stocks that I'm typically trading any one time that I have set up on my screens and I got them all perfectly structured in, you know, on two different screens. What I want to do now is I want to go and, um, open up a chart a uh, blank chart and uh, put one together so we can see um, how it's easy to get studies on here and how it's easy to save the different types of styles. So I've clicked it, went into the chart section, popped open a chart. Uh, so we'll leave this here and let's throw Peloton in there. Um, so here's Peloton. You got a one minute chart that we've uh, kind of set up here. Uh, that's my default setting um, in there. So if you kind of go down, you can set your chart default setting right here. Um, you can reset it. You can reset it to factory default, whatever you want to do. Um, now, what we need to do is add some studies. Now, there's a couple of different ways to add studies. One, the easiest way to me is clicking on this little hourglass. Um, it's supposed to be the place where you go edit studies, but you can also go and add studies pretty nicely in here. Um, and it works really well. Now, you can also go right here and kind of bring this out. You can go into studies and you know go through this whole drop down menu and load study set or find some studies through here. And it's just a pain in the butt. You know, it's too cumbersome for me. Um, but the other issue is sometimes when your chart is really compressed, Press, this hourglass goes away, right? Because you don't have enough space. So there's a hot key for this. So if you hit Control E, that same uh, window will pop up. So let's add some important studies that we would need if we're going to day trade this stock. So the first thing that obviously I'm going to add is view up and uh, think. Thinkorswim has that. So we're going to add that in there. Now it comes pre-set up with Thinkorswim's, uh, you know, parameters. And so I need to, if you double click on here, you can go in and kind of change these around. Now I don't want the standard deviations on there. So I'm just going to make these, turn these to zero because uh, I don't need too many lines. I like pink. So I, you know, I keep that at pink and then I like to, it's an important indicator for me. So I just kind of, you know, make it a little bit thicker. Uh, I click OK and then click Apply, and there's my VWAP. So my VWAP now is on the chart. The next thing I indicator I like to add on there is the opening print. Um, and, you know, Thinkorswim has this as well. Now, you got to go in and really change this around. Um, so the data, I'm going to take this off here. So I'm going to click these off because I don't want these little squiggly lines. I'm just looking for the opening print to show. So I like to make this... Um, I like to make this a regular line and I'm going to make this dashed and I like to use orange just because it's something that I use and I can see. So I click apply and there's my opening print. So now I don't have to guess and draw lines. It automatically every day puts the opening print on my charts. Okay. Now they also, I like to put in there the prior days close. They have that as well. So I click on that. Um, let's go into the prior days close. I like to make that green. Uh, and again, I'm going to make this a line. I'm going to make this dashed. Okay. And I think that's all the changes I got. Yep. So there we go. Okay. So these are the three main um, indicators I want on there. There's another one I want to add. Um, so this right here, this green line shows me the prior day's close. Uh, so it's important for me to, to know that. And I'm going to add one more in here. I'm going to add the exponential moving average. And... Um, see here so we're going to go moving average um exponential right here uh now sometimes i'll use the nine uh, a lot of times i use the 22 so i'm going to add 22 in there um and i like to keep it blue kind of works for me and i'm going to click okay uh and i'm going to click apply apply so there you can kind of see it. And, you know, I may want to make it a little bit thicker so I can, you know, make sure that I can see it. And there you can see the effects of making the line thicker. So I can kind of see where, where the lines are. So I click OK. Um, and there I go. I got my, my moving averages on there. I got everything set up the way I want. You know, I can go in. If I want to go into the settings, I can change the appearance if I want. If I want to go into uh, time axis, I may want to add a little bit of a break. Let's go to 35. 
uh, hit enter and then we'll click apply. Okay, so now it gives me a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a spacing in there. Uh, that's pretty nice. If I wanted to go to equities and get rid of the extended hour session, I would do it that way. But I like to keep the extended hour session in there. So I'm going to keep it. So everything else I, I pretty much like on this chart. So this is this is what's important for me. Now, what I will typically uh, add in there that I've, I've coded, um, it's what's called the opening print. OK, and you see it's called the opening range 15 minute breakout. And so you'll see your codings in here as well. So I can I can click on that and really add in my opening range breakout. But, you know, the problem is you got to go through and kind of delete a lot of this stuff. So I'm not going to add it in there now uh, because I don't want to take up time doing that. But and it would show up on my chart as well. Now, what you can do with these studies, you can save this study set. Okay, and if you want to save the set, you should go save a set right down at the bottom here, name it, and let's name it um, uh, trade, let's name it trade uh, intraday, okay, and click save, okay. Now, um, where are they located? Well, if you go up to the top here, sets, you can see, you click on trade intraday, and there it lists everything that's included in this study set. It's really nice and convenient. Now, if you want, you can remove all these study sets real quickly just by clicking remove all study sets, click apply, and they're gone. Now, if you want to add them back, it's you simply go up to sets, you right click on this, and you click add selected click apply and they're right back on. So it's an easy way to add the study sets, to pull them off, to save study sets and, and stuff like that. Now, I really don't go to too much trouble with saving and removing study sets because what I like to do is save, save a style. So if you go to the style button here, um, if you look, you can go in and see, if you look at the bottom, save style, load style, delete style. So I have a bunch of styles that have been saved, but if I wanted to save this style, I would click save style, give it a name, and let's say we give it the one minute um, day, okay? Now, it's important if you want all of these study sets to be included in the style you're saving that you click this button here. If you don't click it, it's not going to save those. And you click that, click save, boom, you're done. Now, if you go under style and we go under load style and you go under and let's look for that, uh, it's under one minute day right in here. So, you know, if we click that, that'll, you know, uh, and if you go up top, you can see it's named what kind of style you have saved there. Now, I have a bunch of styles that I have saved, um, obviously, and, you know, the one minute trade, if I click on that, notice how my bars are, are brighter. Well, what I did was I went into uh, settings, went into equities, uh, appearance, excuse me, and I just went and clicked on the colors, right? And you can go in and go more and you can just click a brighter color if you want. And to me, it just kind of works. So that's the way I did it. And you can change the borders and stuff like that. So, but it's all that stuff is saved in my style. And if you notice, I don't have the volume down here um, because again, if I go back, you know, I can go to the five minute and typically, if we close this out, what I'll do is if we go back to flexible grid and I go back to two trade, you know, I have the one minute and then I have the volume down here and I have my R vol that really tells me about my volume. And that's what's more important for me um, when I'm looking at my stock. So I don't, I like the real extra real estate space that we have in here. So again, you know, if I want to go to charts here, let's go to charts and I want to pop this one out. Let's click detach. Uh, you know, now we have a blank chart. Let's go throw Peloton back in there. Let's throw a stock back in there. And, uh, you know, we want to go back to style. Let's go load our style. We can go in here. Um, we can load this style. Uh, what did we save? We saved in under one minute day. You know, it's right there. That's the style we saved. And you, you can go and apply that style really easy. And then you can also save that style. So remember, we have it on our tool, toolbar. If I wanted to, I can come in, click uh, delete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to delete the one minute trade button. And now I'm going to add our style that we wanted to add. Uh, that we just made, and let's add one minute day, and now it pops up there, and I click done, and it's done. Okay, so if I go to five minute Arval, it'll pull up that style. If I go back to that one minute day, it pulls it right back up. Now, obviously, I, I want to kind of delete that, delete that back, and put my but my style back on there because um, 
you know, uh, and then I'm going to move it over to here. So you can and click done and off we go. So that's an easy way of saving style. Um, and again, if you have the toolbar up, you can kind of manipulate yourself through style. And remember, if you go to at settings, you know, you click this, this show study button, right? And you keep it in under this, you can click these studies to come off. You can click them to come on. So there's a lot of different things you can do uh, to make this work. Um, and one last thing that I'll kind of want to show you guys is um, there's another thing that you can save. So this is really working with studies. But what about price levels and drawings and trend lines? Well, you can actually save a drawing set on your charts. And the way I like to do it is I like to go up and you go up and click drawings and you see it says drawing set as default. OK, well, I had a day drawing set for a Peloton. I have an inner day uh, drawing set. And I typically have an hour trading set saved for Peloton. So, and that works uh, really well too, because I don't like to have a bunch of different lines and, you know, when I'm going through different charts. So if I want to, this is the intraday. So what I would do is click on intraday and now it gives me all my levels. So it gives me the pre-market high. It would typically give me, you know, a, a, a uh, high from the previous day if I wanted to do that. Or, you know, I could also just click and clear drawing set and, you know, save things under here. So again, let's go back um, to drawings. Let's go back to default. Okay. And let's, let's clear the drawing set out. And so let's say you want to, you know, go through, I'm going to use price levels. Um, and let's say we're looking at yesterday's price action and really yesterday, you know, the high, the important levels that I'm looking at, the high is right here. So I'm going to do that in blue, which is what I typically do. Um, Pre-market high, I'm going to go in and, you know, kind of edit this and, and go into white. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned you really, you know, default, I don't care about. But if it's a strong set that you care about, you want to really save it before you start making changes. So you should really save this. So I'm going to save this in, uh, let's save this intraday. Um, a, okay, and we're going to save this right here, um, intraday A, and if you go up, you can kind of see it's intraday A, okay, and so now you can go through and start making your changes because it's not going to affect anything, and if you look here, as this Peloton opened the day, I had these levels drawn, then I may go into the hourly chart and see if there's any levels, you know, let's make sure it's auto-zoomed, it's good. Is there any levels on Peloton we need to know on the hourly chart? And, you know, daily levels as well, you know, on Peloton, is there any daily levels that we want to have on our interday chart, okay? So if I go back to, you know, my one minute, um, you can kind of see now, this, I have my level set, and as I come in here, Okay, you can see how I trade the day. So now I automatically have my opening print. I automatically have, you know, my prior days closed. So I don't have to do anything with them. And then, you know, I got my pre-market high and I got my prior days high. So now I can trade this stock. And, oh, by the way, this is my drawing set that I, excuse me, my style. So this green bar and this red bar is the 15 minute high and low for the day. So it's kind of like the opening range for Peloton that I like to look at. Um, and so it gives me all my levels and it gives me my basis for moving. And, you know, we actually did, did trade Peloton in here. And if we kind of zoom in, if I kind of can zoom in here, um, you know, the, the trade was a, a break above opening print, right? It kind of held in here on VWAP. It was holding right in here, um, the, the pre-market high, and then it took off, right? And then, you know, a nice little buy on this break. And then, you know, you're kind of following the 22 as far as when do you want to get out? You know, it's kind of making this high, came back down, held support in here. Um, you might want to get out a little here and then, you know, get out a little violation here maybe, right? So that, that's kind of how we day trade. And so we have all our levels saved in there. And, um, you know, it really helps to have us. And then I can go in and when I'm looking at this, I can go into daily, I can go into drawings and I can change this back to, you know, the day chart and, you know, the day line will pop up, right? We didn't have these lines in here earlier. You know, if you go back to drawings and let's go back to inner day A, you can kind of see those lines are gone. So you can save different drawing sets. You can delete drawing sets. You can remove drawing sets. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do um, that really helps you um, kind of maneuver through thinkorswim charts on a, on a rather quickly basis. So I hope this helped you um, to really, I think this toolbar is a really good hack. I like the hotkeys on using your 
your charts. And you know, you can save your studies, you can uh, save your drawings, and you can save your styles. Uh, and then that's really important. So you just go in, load the style that you want, and you don't have to constantly redraw charts as you're going through Thinkorswim. Okay, this is Mike. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh, and uh, I'll be talking to you later.